All right. <clears throat> we have a microphone attached to my shirt, attached to my phone. So that hopefully you can just hear me breathing loudly as I'm hacking apart an animal. <laughs> oh, man. Now the junk audio in some of the videos, the reverb and all that just irritating. I'm going to show you how to take the bone out of a deer tail. And I guess spoiler alert, um, it, it can be a little gnarly. You get used to it. Um, I have cut off the business end. So if you can imagine the deer tail goes like this. So there's some other stuff going on there. You go to the butcher shop, deer processor, um, whatever it is in your area. There's they're, they're all over the country. So you just go there and ask them if you can get a tail. You might have to dig through a barrel or two. Um, so after you get them, you know, if they're, if they're just lopping them off, they typically come with some of the digestive, digestive tract attached. Um, so you hack that off. Things you need, sharp knife. If you're doing more than one of these, I would suggest, or if you're doing, I don't know, more than five of these, um, I would suggest gloves because we're gonna be using a healthy amount of borax, uh, both for drying and um, de-smelling. Um, but then during this process, I like to use it just to kind of loosen some stuff up here. So here's the tail. All of this is still attached. Um, you know, obviously you can do this on a table or whatever. And you're going to cut into this part comes with, Hey, I'll just I'll use this one. So it comes with this little fleshy bit. I like to, coming on the sides of that. And just make a little triangle. And you can see here between the, the meat, the meat on the bone of the tail and the actual flesh itself, you want to separate that as much as possible. And you can run that knife all the way through and around the back. Sometimes it's actually, you need to, because some of these, they're all different. Um, but some of these have just more connective tissue running down the back. And so at this point, that, that's probably going to be enough for me. Maybe cut a little more up the center. You know, be careful. Don't cut yourself all that. Um some other options, especially if you're using latex gloves just to get a rag or something to grab this bone. Um, and then rinsing soap and water is your friend throughout this process. But once you're here, just going around the base of that tail. And this is where you can run that knife there again. If that part is being stubborn. So that is looking pretty clean. And you can, if, if you're seeing meat and fat up in through here, 
Um, so it's just going to happen sometimes. Like, I mean, even this right here, I'm going to want to make sure that, you know, that's, that's disconnected before I rip the whole thing off. Cause the starting point is going to dictate how this thing pulls off. So once, you know, once that's nice and separated, you don't need to be too picky after you, you know, put it up, dry it out, put borax on it, etc. You can get any of the remaining little bits that might be off. Um, but this is the, the fun part. What's fun for me? Um, yeah, so if you're using latex glove, this can be a little slippery, soap and water, etc. So I'm not going to do this just to save my hands, but this stuff just dries out your hands. Um, so you can just sprinkle that on the base of this tail or use a, a rag to grip this thing. And so gripping this, this. That's all she wrote. Next step. Sharp, sharp knife. This, you know what? I might be, yeah, I'm going to be. That's a nice tail. You could use a utility knife. The problem is you can pretty easily cut through the back of it. It doesn't matter um, if you're doing this for yourself, but um, I've done a really good job of destroying the tip of this thing, so it actually works out quite nicely. So getting this down in there and you're gonna be able to see the white flesh on the outside and there's some, the dark stuff and that's just the light versus the dark fur. No fucking clue if I'm in frame. That's all right though. So slide this down the middle. If you don't have a sharp knife, or if your knife begins to dull, which it will, you'll you'll sometimes, or if your tails aren't fresh, these are these were killed today. Um, you know, some of that, some of those last cuts can catch, and you'll you know you'll pop one of the pieces off or get a sideways cut. And again, super, super doesn't matter, especially, uh, you know, up in the tip, if you're losing that piece, it's just, it's such a small amount of usable hair. But, you know, end product, right? What I'm doing here is totally unnecessary because I'm going to end up, eh, yeah. I'll probably end up cutting this stuff. This is good. This is great hair for, you know, like Buford -y type stuff. It's got a lot of under fur, but it, you know, it's, it's still got some nice bucktail quality. Um, obviously not white, but if you're dying, I mean, dying it olive or, or black, that's, that's great hair to use for the heads. So, meh. Cut it about right there. And really what I want to get out is the stretchy, this, the stretchy skin um, that's right around the, the business end. Um, and it, that's both for the, 
the drying process, I want to have this be somewhat uniform when I hang it up. You lose a little bit of that rump hair when you're doing hundreds. You just, you, you have to call it. At some point, if you're doing this on your own, you're just doing a handful. Obviously, keep as much as you want or as much as you can. Uh, rack made of 0.5 by ones. Um, this is what I do. Whatever, waste some staples, but. And despite being in a bottle, I'm going to test. Nope, that's actually my daughter's conditioning spray, detangling spray. Great stuff to use for tails in general. But if you can dissolve some of this into water, um, that's going to be the ticket. But since I haven't. Said I'm not gonna do that. Save my hands, and here I am. So just mash this in. If you're not using gloves, wash your hands after this. Um, what I like to do is let this. You like put put a decent coating on here, and you can even lay it flat and put on a big coating. If you have them super fresh, and you get and you get a layer on here. Um, you know, let it dry overnight. I have a little heater. I'll cover it up. Um, let it dry overnight. It, it'll it'll be most of the way there with really not not much of that stuff. Um, wash that off and then put another another layer. And if you can, spray it with a dissolved solution so that borax actually s soaks down into it, and that takes a lot of the the grease and some other stuff that you'll you can take care of with another washing or two. Um, but if you do it right the first time, your life will be easier. That's it. You just wash, rinse, repeat. And then soap, again, soap and water is your friend. Borax is your friend. Gloves, eye protection, um, and then, uh, a face mask or something like that. If you're, if you're doing a bunch and, and you saw when I pulled that tail and, and gave the first cut, um, you don't want to get that stuff in your mouth, or maybe you do, I don't know. Good luck.